So we're going to graph this rational function. We're going to graph these four parts right here, and we'll graph them in the order they're given. These kind of go easiest to more difficult. So let's start with number one, the y-intercept. So you definitely need to know by now for the y-intercept, you're plugging in x equals zero right here. And right here, f of zero equals, we got negative two, zero minus three is minus three, zero minus seven is minus seven over minus eight. And we can cancel the two and then negative eight to a four. Three times seven is 21. And this is our y-intercept. So when we plot it, it'll be zero comma 21 fourths. That might be kind of tricky on the graph. Just remember 21 fourths, very close to 20 fourths. And of course, 20 fourths is five and a fourth. All right, so we're gonna plot that at five and then one fourth higher than five. All right, x-intercepts. Those are actually really fast to see. And if I just write the generic function, rational function, you have a times, you can see the x-intercepts as factors and the vertical asymptotes as factors. So this is super important to remember right here. So this is all part one. Now we're into part two, x-intercepts. So we have what makes x minus three zero? Not x equals zero, but x equals three. If I put a three in here, that'll turn into zero. So I'll write x minus three corresponds to three, zero. x minus seven corresponds to seven, zero. So those are the two x-intercept points. And remember, these are all three of these are points. So they're going to show up on the graph as points wherever they happen to go. We'll graph them carefully. All right, vertical asymptote. Those are in the denominator. What makes x minus 8 0? x equals 8. And so what's x equals 8 going to look like? It's actually going to be a vertical line at the x-coordinate of 8. All right, that's vertical asymptote. All right, last up, end behavior which would be number four. And when we do this, I'm just gonna copy this down. I'm not writing f of x because what we're about to do is not algebra. I'm about to throw away a lot of stuff, all the constants here, or at least all the constants that are added or subtracted. The multiplied constant's important, meaning the two is important. So now you want to think if X is really big, like a million or a billion, if I had a million dollars, would I care about losing three? Probably not. So we're just going to simplify that down to X. The minus seven doesn't matter. And denominator, we just have one more X. So you have X squared over X. Or another way to look at this, you can cancel the X and the X. And you should be able to see in that form, it just cancels down to X. All right, what kind of graph is this? Well, it's a line, slope negative two. What's the y-intercept? Zero. So let's go ahead and line all these up on a graph. I'm gonna need x-coordinates three, seven, and eight. All positive. So I'll zoom out a little bit to see everything. So there's three, seven, eight. It's a little different. It's a vertical asymptote, which is a vertical line. So I'm gonna, instead of writing a dot, I'm gonna put a little vertical line. Now I'm gonna expand this vertical line out. Usually we graph them with a different color. So there we go. And the last thing we're graphing is end behavior. We'll graph it with red also. So negative two X, it's going through the origin because the winer sub zero, negative two means down two over one, down two over one. 
And so this There's our line right there. All right, so that would be my answer right there. Uh, if we graph the entire function, so this is going beyond what the question actually asked us to do. Let's go with the green here. Everything was a bounce. So this end behavior is a little misleading because actually it keeps going down. And now that I put away that free hand, my line will look horrible. And then this, Keeps going down, 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 down. All right, so if we graph this, I have to match the end behavior on the left, and I have to hit this x-intercept. So I have to go up here and hit the x-intercept. I'm gonna cross over, cross over, because they were both odd powers, and then I have to approach the vertical asymptote at the top. So that's the first part of the graph. Now, after the vertical asymptote, we do not have a bounce. A bounce will look like this, but a bounce would have required a square right there. We do not have a square. We have an odd power, a first power. So it's going to come out of the asymptote on the bottom side. It also has to approach the end behavior on the right. So it's going to look like this right here. Could draw it a little further if you want. So there's our full graph, not required to answer this particular question. So there's our graph. Unfortunately, it's super tall, so I can't really see it on a normal zoom, but there it is.